Before the word Rome existed, Celtic people lived in freedom. Each god, creature, being, or monster gave an explanation to every event in life, and the Druids, those friends of the colored mushrooms, helped to interpret their messages and understand their whims. In this video, we are going to see 15 creatures from different areas of Europe in Celtic mythology. Number 1. Night Washerwomen The washerwomen of the night, known in Brittany as Les Lavandières, are old or spectral women who appear washing clothes in rivers or streams at night, especially in lonely places. They dress in old, worn-out clothes, which may look like they belong to a bygone era. It's like if you're out in the wilderness, walk up to the river and see someone dressed in clothes from 300 years ago, what would you think? Hell and Amish but a quick glance at their faces would be enough to know that they are not human, or at least that they are lifeless. For their faces are usually pale, thin, with serious and melancholic expressions. Their hands, which are constantly engaged in the task of washing, are wrinkled and worn from eternal toil. And although they are fragile in appearance, they have a supernatural strength, so it would be better not to provoke them. It is said of them that their presence is accompanied by a supernatural silence. The forest is silent, no animal is heard, neither the air blowing nor the river flowing, only their persistent washing is heard. The sound of hitting the clothes against the stones is the only thing that breaks the silence of the night. In Breton folklore, the washerwomen of the night are associated with omens of death, calamity, or misfortune. The clothes they wash belong to those who are about to die or who have recently died. If you meet them at night, they may ask you to help them wring out the laundry, but helping them can be dangerous, as they may drag you into the water or cause you misfortune. I trusted you. Number 2. Gwilgi. The Gwilgi, known in Welsh Celtic folklore as the Dog of Darkness, or the Black Dog, it is a large dog with a dark coat that seems to absorb the light around it. Its eyes are prominent in legends. They glow with a deep red or yellow glow, like embers. The size of the Gwilgi varies in stories, but it is generally larger than an ordinary dog. Its size and silent gait make it a terrifying apparition on dark nights. The Gwilgi is known for its spectral nature and its ability to appear and disappear at will. It haunts lonely roads, graveyards, crossroads, and other places associated with death and the supernatural. Its presence is a sign of a bad omen, portending death or misfortune for those who encounter it. It is a solitary being. In legends, its mere appearance is enough to instill deep terror in those who see it. It haunts travelers at night, following them with its fiery gaze. The Gwilgi also plays a role as a guardian of the boundaries between the world of the living and the realm of the supernatural. Number 3. Ohankanu the Ohankanu is a mythological creature in the tradition of Cantabrian folklore, a region of northern Spain. This creature is one of the most feared in the pantheon of Celtic myths of the region, and believe me, it is for good reason. Physically, he is a giant of great size and strength, far exceeding the size of a normal human. His skin is tough and rough, with an almost impenetrable toughness. The Ohankanu has a single eye in the middle of its forehead, similar to the Cyclops of Greek mythology. This single large, piercing eye gives him exceptional vision. His long, untidy hair and beard give him an even more savage and fearsome appearance. His voice, powerful and booming, has the ability to instill fear in those who hear it. The Ojankanu is a malevolent and destructive creature. Acts of great cruelty and destruction are attributed to it, such as raising villages, destroying crops and terrorizing the population. Its temperament is violent and angry, and it enjoys causing chaos and disorder. Despite its brutal behavior, the Ohankanu is intelligent. It is known to employ trickery and deception to trap or confuse its opponents. This creature is also linked to the natural places of Cantabria, such as mountains, caves, and forests. It inhabits these remote places where it can live and act undisturbed by humans. Number 4. Anku Anku, a crucial being in Cornish mythology, is also found in the folklore of Brittany and other Celtic regions. Imagine him as a spectral being, 
who may appear as a skeletal or cadaverous being, with a thin, bony body. This being is wrapped in black or tattered clothes that seem to flow around him, almost as if they were made of shadows. If you were to catch a glimpse of its face, you would notice that it is thin and shadowy, with deep, piercing eyes that seem to look straight into the soul. It lives in lonely places such as cemeteries, crossroads, and desolate spots. Its presence is a reminder of the inevitability of death and the thin line between the world of the living and the dead. The Anku has the ability to transform. Sometimes he may appear as an old man, and sometimes as a young man, depending on the stories or who he comes to collect. In addition, Anku is recognized by his cart, which he drags behind him. This cart, old and creaking, serves as a tool for collecting souls. The sound it makes announces his arrival with a dark tone that foreshadows the approach of death. In some versions, the Anku is not alone. He is accompanied by helpers or lesser spirits who assist him in his eternal task of collecting souls. These beings are shadowy and silent, always at the Anku's side in his work. Number 5. Baylor. First, imagine a guy who is not only a giant, but has an eye that could win any deadly staring contest. And yes, literally. This eye, when he opens it, doesn't just give you a dirty look. We're talking about a stare that destroys everything in its path. And if that wasn't enough, Baylor is the leader of the Fomorians, which is basically the rival team of the Tuaha de Danaun, who were like the superheroes of Irish mythology. In addition to having a destructive laser beam stare, Baylor is a brutal warrior. Things get really interesting in their battle against Lug, one of the Tuaha de Danaun. Lug is basically the hero everyone wants to be, handsome, strong, and with magical powers. And against all odds, Lug manages to defeat Baylor, proving that no matter how strong you are, there's always someone more cunning. What is best about Baylor is not just his strength, but what he represents, chaos, destruction, but also a crucial part of the stories that have come down to us from ancient Ireland. Baylor and the Tuaha de Danon are like two sides of a coin. For in every story there are heroes and villains, but each has his role. If in this video of Celtic creatures you miss more creatures from Ireland or Scotland, don't worry because I'm already working on a specific video. Now I just need you to tell me which one you prefer to give it priority. So, write in the comments. Creatures of Ireland or Creatures of Scotland. Number 6. Spriggans. Spriggans the little big guardians of Cornwall. These creatures are small and rather ugly at first glance, but don't be fooled because they have the ability to swell up into giants, like those cartoons where the character inflates when he gets angry. Not only that, but their strength is monumental, especially when it comes to protecting what is theirs. We're talking about ancient treasures and sacred places that you wouldn't dare touch if you know what's good for you. Want to explore an ancient tomb or take a souvenir from a burial mound? Well, the Spriggans are here to show you what a bad idea that is. Not everything in their life is about fighting and protecting. Spriggans love a good prank. They're top-notch pranksters, though their tricks aren't always for laughs. From getting you lost in the woods to hiding your keys, they have a pretty unique sense of humor. And if that's not enough, they control the weather. They can conjure up storms, winds, and fog to confuse or frighten people and to make sure it's clear to you who's in charge of nature. Number 7. Quelebre. The Quelebre, a being that will make you rethink everything you knew about dragons and mythical creatures, as this is not your typical fairy tale dragon. It is a giant beast, with a body that looks like a cross between a snake and a dragon, covered with scales so hard that almost nothing can penetrate them. These dark-colored scales give it the power of perfect camouflage in the mountains and caves of Asturias and Cantabria, making the Quelebri the ninja of dragons. Despite its size and looking like something out of an old horror movie, this critter is able to fly. It has huge wings with which it soars through the skies, causing equal parts terror and awe. Imagine sitting quietly in your village and watching the shadow of this colossus pass over you. I don't know about you, but I'd be running in the opposite direction. But what would a dragon be without a breath that wreaks havoc? A serpent's can be poisonous or even fire-breathing. This being is a solitary, isolated and territorial, preferring the tranquility of its mountain cave or the serenity of being near a spring. And as a self-respecting dragon, it hoards treasures that it protects with a ferocity that would make even the bravest of knights think twice. And here's the interesting part. 
Despite his intimidating appearance and reputation for ferocity, the Quelebre has its Achilles heel. It turns out that he can be tricked or cajoled, though you have to have the courage and cunning to try. Number 8. Fuath. In the waters of Scotland we meet the Fuath. Forget friendly mermaids and mermen, the Fuath are on another level. This creature varies considerably. Some may look almost human, but they are actually monstrous. Green skin, or completely covered with hair and large eyes. Some have scaly skin, or skin covered with moss and algae. Fuath love to play with humans, and not exactly in a friendly way. Imagine being dragged into the water, or worse, being kidnapped by one of these beings. From shape-shifting to controlling the very water around them, the Fuath are masters of their aquatic domain. So, if you ever find yourself near a body of water in Scotland, think twice before you scorn the local stories, as the Loch Ness Monster is not the only creature that lurks in the deep, cold Scottish waters. Each lake, river, or pond has its own history, and possibly its own Fuath watching over it. Number 9. Sihiraith. The Sihiraith, in the Celtic mythology of Wales, is a haunting and spectral supernatural creature associated with death and foreboding. Known primarily for its call or cry, which is an omen of impending death, in the few descriptions that exist, it is like a female specter, shrouded in the mist between this world and the next its figure barely distinguishable in the mist that rises above the Welsh waters. When the Sihirith manifests itself, it does not do so with a terrifying apparition, but with a wail that cuts through the silence of the night, a sound that is mistaken for the moaning of the wind, but carries within it a darker depth. But how would you recognize the Sihirith if you encountered it? Its form is rarely spoken of, for it is its voice that announces its presence, a voice that brings with it the chill of the grave. It is a sound that makes your skin crawl. This cry, this wail, is not one that is easily forgotten. It is said to have the power to freeze your blood, a sound so desolate and disturbing that you immediately know it carries with it a dark message. The Sahirath need not be seen to be feared. Its call is a harbinger of impending death, especially for those whose end is near. Number 10. Eurisk. The Eurisk, in Scottish Celtic mythology, is a unique creature, a solitary and brooding being that inhabits the remote and wooded areas of Scotland. The Eurisk is a hybrid creature. Its upper body is generally human and contrasted with goat's hooves that support its being, and sometimes with a furry tail, its face reflects a rustic wisdom, with deep, expressive eyes that have seen many seasons and a scruffy beard. His fur may be shaggy or have tufts of hair, of a color that blends well with the forest environment, such as brown or dark green. This being carries with it an innate kindness, a curiosity for the human world that is rarely reciprocated. It dwells in those corners of Scotland where nature still sings songs of ancient Celtic magic, in mountains, by rivers, and under waterfalls that hide more than one secret. The Eurisk, with its solitary heart, seeks the company of humans, though its appearance and manner may cause surprise or even fear. In some stories, his presence is said to be a blessing in disguise for those able to look beyond first impressions, offering help with rural tasks or guiding the lost back to the road, though his attempts at assistance sometimes prove more of a challenge than a help. Beyond his physical strength or his ability to camouflage himself with the forest, Eurisk is valued for his knowledge of the natural world and his ability to predict the weather or warn of future disasters. He would be like the Celtic version of a weatherman. Number 11. Afank. The Afank, a creature from the Celtic mythology of Wales, is powerful, and as is becoming a regular feature of this top, it is associated with lakes and rivers. It appears in various legends and stories with different interpretations. In some stories, it is a crocodile or dragon-like monster, with a large, stout, scale-covered body and a powerful tail. In other versions, it is seen as adopting more peculiar features, a fusion of beaver and demon, a creature unlike anything that walks on land or swims in the sea. This being has one thing in common in all the stories. It is absolutely terrifying, a creature of great strength capable of causing floods and destruction. Its movements in the water are associated with stirring up the waters and creating dangerous currents. 
This being not only enjoys causing environmental chaos, it also has a particular fondness for attacking humans and animals, dragging them into the depths never to be seen again. We're talking about a water dweller you definitely wouldn't want to encounter while swimming. Number 12. Bucca. Associated with the coasts and fishing villages of Cornwall, the bucca has a role that oscillates between being a protective spirit and an omen of bad augury. There is no one way to describe it because, like the sea, it changes and transforms. Sometimes it appears as a ghostly, ethereal presence that you can barely perceive beyond the sea breeze. But don't be fooled, because it can also manifest itself in much more tangible and, frankly, intimidating ways. Imagine for a moment a huge man with scaly skin, eyes that glow with an aquatic glow, and hair that looks more like seaweed or fishing nets. But what makes the bucca so special? Well, it is his connection to the sea and fishing that makes him such a revered and feared figure in Cornwall. This spirit of the sea plays with the fate of fishermen. In some stories, he is a protector who guides fishermen to fish rich waters or leads them away from storms and danger. But like the sea, the bucca can be capricious. Offend him, and you could find yourself with empty nets or in the middle of an unexpected storm. That is why, in coastal villages, it was not uncommon to see offerings or rituals dedicated to this being in an attempt to gain its favor and protection. For fishermen, the bucca can be both their salvation and their undoing. Its favor is as coveted as its anger is feared. Luck in fishing and protection from storms are gifts it can bestow, as long as it is respected and honored according to ancient rites. He prefers solitude, prowling the coasts and remote places, always ready to be a harbinger of what is to come, whether good or bad. Number 13. Corrigan. The Corrigan, from Breton Celtic mythology, are beings who live right on the edge of what we can see and what we can only imagine. The Corrigan are like those neighbors that everyone knows, but no one really understands. They are small humanoid beings of great beauty, resembling in some respects the fairies or elves of other folklores. Their eyes are large, bright, and capable of hypnotizing humans. They often wear clothes that blend in with nature, dresses made of leaves, flowers, or cloth. This allows them to camouflage themselves easily and move around undetected. These beings are the soul of festivals that no one sees but everyone feels. They dance in stone circles and near springs, places that are charged with pure magic. And here's the thing, the Corrigan are protectors of these places. They love nature and do everything they can to keep it safe, even if that means bringing out their mischievous or even sinister side if someone threatens their home. Corrigan have a gentle side. They can offer you adventures you never imagined, show you things your eyes might not otherwise see. Just don't offend them. They have a vengeful side, especially if they feel you don't respect their space or their rules. Their wisdom seems to come from a time that we mortals can only begin to understand. They say they know what is going to happen, that they can see the fabric of destiny as if it were an open map. Number 14. Anjana. The Anjana is a creature from the Celtic mythology of Cantabria in northern Spain. The Anjana is a woman of breathtaking beauty, dressed in the essence of the forest, with clothes that blend in with nature, as if she were just another part of the landscape. Her presence radiates kindness and serenity. It is her kindness and desire to help that truly defines her. It is not uncommon to hear stories of travelers lost in the forest, suddenly finding their way thanks to the silent guidance of the Anjana or of those in misfortune receiving comfort and help in their time of need. Have you ever been lost in the forest? Well, the Anjana is the creature you wish you could meet in that moment. If you have a problem or need comfort, she is there to help. The Anjana is not only kind, she is also powerful. In some legends, she is said to be a magical being with powerful supernatural abilities. We are talking about communicating with the animals of the forest, curing illnesses with an ancient knowledge of herbs and plants, and protecting nature as if it were her own garden. If anyone messes with the forest, they had better not meet this being, because she does not tolerate those who do not respect the balance of nature. She is a protector, a guardian of the forest, and all that lives in it and she does not hesitate to punish those who harm her home. Number 15. 
Melusine. Melusine, with her beauty and charm, could easily be the protagonist of any romance novel, until you get to the part about her aquatic double life. Imagine someone who on the one hand is pure elegance, but who keeps a secret. Half of her body is snake or fish, mermaid style, but she only lets her secret come out in her most private moments. Melusine's most famous legend tells the story of her marriage to a mortal nobleman. After their marriage, Melusine led a seemingly normal life, and together they had several children. However, Melusine's condition to Raymond was that he was never to see her in her bath, especially on Saturdays, when she assumed her true form. Despite his promise, curiosity got the better of the nobleman, and one Saturday, motivated by suspicions and rumors about his wife's nature, he decided to spy on her while she bathed. Upon discovering her secret, Melusine's serpentine or mermaid form, her husband broke the fundamental trust in their relationship. When seen in her true form, Melusine felt betrayed, and her reaction varied according to different versions of the legend. In some stories, Melusine, upon being discovered, transforms into a dragon and flies away from her castle, leaving her family behind, never to be seen in the same form again. Her cry of pain and betrayal is said to echo across the lands she once called home. In other versions, Melusine is forced to leave her family, but it is said that she continues to watch over her descendants from afar, appearing in times of great need or before important or tragic events within her lineage. Despite her husband's betrayal, Melusine remains a protective spirit for her children and her people. Remember to comment what you prefer, video of creatures from Ireland or Scotland, Subscribe and like and share this video with your friends.